Good morning. How are you? Still breathing? Okay, so um, we're going to continue the lesson now. Um, however, there is still some bits of plant growth analysis that involves calculation that I have not shown. That, not to worry, we will have a revise uh, during lab time. Or do I not need to show that because your mathematics is just good? The formula has been given in the slide. You just plug in all the values and boom, you're going to get the values for various uh, growth analysis parameters. Right. <clears throat> so for this week and also next week, this should be for two weeks actually, we're going to look at the you can see that the first visible event of plant growth, which is seed germination. Okay. However, the germination itself comprises other events associated to it. Meaning that before the germination takes place, something has already happened. And post germination, there are other things that are going to take place as well. So it is not like a one-off event, like you turning off the tap water and done with it, but rather it is a continuum of process. So when we're talking about the seeds, obviously we are dealing with seeds, plants, plants that have seeds, okay? So if you remember from your botanist lesson, not all plants producing seeds. Is that correct? Can you give me some example plants that are not producing seeds? Getah. Kubaling kau dengar. Biji getah tu apa benda? Tu kan seeds. Lagi seko. Habis kau makan tu apa? Oh God. Pokok? Pokok pine, okay. The seeds is now called what? This is not seed. What do you call it? Spore, salah pokok. Pine tu dah betul. Pisang ada biji. Pisang hutan tu ada biji. Pine, it doesn't have seeds. It's called cone. Cone. Spores, it's true as well, but not for pine, it's for fern. You know fern? Can you eat fern? Yes. No? Yes. Okay, <coughs> so we're dealing with specific group of plants now. Plants that are producing seeds. Magnoliopsida. Have you heard that word yes. before? Okay, all right. For um, gymnosperm. Okay. These are the events that give rise to the seeds, more or less. Okay, just a general part of it. So, it's seeds are actually the product of pollination, fertilization, embryo development, they come together in a sequential manner. Meaning that you cannot eliminate one of the steps. If one is missing, you're not going to get your seeds. This is how the nature has been intended. Therefore, nobody so far can create seeds in the lab because the seed itself contains the life essence in it. And as we all know, despite of our advances in technology, we cannot create life just yet. We can create artificial life, 
you know you get your robot your ai thing and stuff but the conscience the i don't know what conscience in malay meaning that the free will of the thing that you created is not as good as naturally obtained from the nature okay so from the action of pollination i'm not going to go too, too deep into this so with the pollination you know that is the action of male parts of the flower to meet with the female part of the flower in the form of what what is traveling from the male parts to the female part pollen okay so pollen contains the male gamete right and then this is going to travel sometimes it doesn't have to travel very far it's just within the same flower structure sometimes it has to travel very very far you know that's why it needs the wings or animal dispersal mechanism okay then the two will meet the male and female gamete they will fuse together when both are viable and fertile they will get the fertilization with the fertilization the embryo now is complete and it will start to develop pretty much like human development the fetus development in the womb right and through all of this event you will get your seeds okay so this is the anther producing the pollen the pollen will fly and then lands on the stigma and then the pollen tube will come out from this pollen the pollen doesn't travel to meet with the gamut okay it actually um producing a pipe a pipe like structure it's called a pollen tube and this pipe is actually a conduit in which the sperm cell travel all the way down to meet with the what what's it this circle thing ovule okay and that will become fertilized and they will start to develop and then you will get your seed okay so this is a living structure even though it is small and it is not progressing very much it's not moving it's not like a baby you know the baby the moment you fertilize it very soon it's going to get a heartbeat and it's going to move kicking the mom from inside and everything there is a clear sign of it being alive seeds do not do that the seeds do not kick from inside the durian fruit you don't see that the durian fruit is wobbling because the seed is kicking from the inside even though it's not moving violently it is still alive <clears throat> so the biological function of seeds why do you need seeds because you might know that some plants even if you snap the stem and then you 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 put the stem into the ground it will grow like your favorite plant cassava tapioca right does it require seeds to have a new plant how how, how do you grow tapioca cassava from what Okay, from, from the yes, from the stem. You just snap the stem, cut it into several sections, and then you kind of plunge it into the soil, and very soon you're going to get a new units of plants. However, these plants are called vegetatively produced, meaning that it is pretty much identical to the mother plant. There is no genetic diversity. To some degree, that is good because you get the qualities that you are after. For example, um, faster maturity, sweet tasting, and so on. However, 
in terms of genetic diversity, vegetative reproduction is not good. Okay, the seeds, however, it's from the combination of two gametes from mom and dad. Therefore, these seeds actually will be different from the original parents. These might not impart the qualities that you necessarily like, but it ensures that the seedlings resulting from the fertilization of mom and dad is active and dynamic, meaning that you see our world is constantly changing, right? The climate, the everything, you become more hungrier, and so on. So the seeds need to adapt to this newer climate every decade or so. So with the genetic combination from various moms and dads, the seeds are actively adapting to the environment. It can get stronger and better suited to this new environment. The thing that the vegetative propagation cannot achieve. So in agriculture, this is highly practiced. So it will give rise to what we call as um, monoculture. You know, you have a plantation like the banana that is vegetatively propagated. The danger with that is the moment one plant is being inf infected by a disease, the whole 100 hectares of the plantation will be obliterated as well. Because nobody got immunity against that disease. So that, 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 that's, not, that's not good and can actually have a devastating effect on the economy of the farmers. Okay. However, when the seeds have a colorful genetic diversity, this will ensure that wherever coming towards inside the, the, the plant, maybe infection or something, the seeds will adapt the words dynamic to the assault. Okay, so maybe the seeds are not prepared at the beginning of it, but since it's got this colorful genetic variation in the body, it will be very much faster to create a new antibody to be immune to this uh, infection. Can you name one? deadly disease associated with banana. What is it? It's called fusarium wilt. Fusarium. Fusarium wilt. <coughs> okay, so that's why genetic diversity is very important. Right. <coughs> So looking at the seed itself, it is not one size because there are many species around the planet. There are very, very small seeds to the bigger seeds, as bigger as your ego. The small seed, what is it? Orchid seeds. So this is an orchid flower and from the pot, the orchid producing pot, think of vanilla. If you didn't know, vanilla is orchid. So vanilla, the pot of the vanilla, when you slit open, it's going to give you like millions of small black dots. That is this thing. It's like a speck of dust, really. So making orchid seeds is the smallest seeds in the plant kingdom. Remember that that is a genius book of record. One. What about the largest? Double coconut, coco dimmer. Um, it's so big. This is actually the cousin of coconut. Coconut is big as well, but only half of it. 
imagine 18 kilograms. That's so big. All right. Why? Why in it, it needs to be so big? Each of the physical being small and super light has advantage on its own right. When you are small, easily dispersed by the wind. Can this coconut get dispersed by the wind? Maybe Thai food. That's a win as well. Right. However, the reason it is so small is because coconut, sorry, orchid seed do not have a food reserve. It's just the embryo and the casing. That's all. The obvious disadvantage of this is when orchid seeds want to germinate, it must have a symbiotic fungus associated to it when it's germinating. Meaning that if you have an orchid seed, you put it on the damp cloth, it's not going to germinate. Nothing will happen. Unless the BFF of the orchid seeds, which is a special fungus. Remember, one species of orchid has its own BFF. It's not like all fungus can be friends with one orchid, no. So it's very hard for the orchid actually to germinate in nature. Whatever that you see now, it's germinating right. This is artificially in the lab. So in the lab, you have a petri dish. The petri dish, you fill it with nutritional agar. The agar, you infuse it with nutrients, hormones, sugar, and so on. So the seeds can germinate happily as per usual. This guy here, this cocoa dimmer double coconut, cannot be dispersed by wind. How it, 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 it's got dispersed? How? Water. I'm surprised you didn't answer by the guy. <laughs> right. They just take it from one place, they put, they put it in one place. They, they have just become the dispersal agent. So it is big, meaning that there is a lot of food reserve in the seeds. Plus, it is not easy for the seeds to get damaged during the dispersing event. It can get floating about in the sea for only God knows how long and how far. Right, it, it could take years before this coconut, this cocoa dimmer, to land in a suitable place. It can be 10 years, it can be 20 years, nobody knows. But it is just equipped with the right structure to undergo this journey, right? So these are the general functions of the seeds, which are meant for propagation. It protects the zygote against physical injury, like in the case of um, coconut. It also stores food for the seedlings before it becomes independent. The seeds cannot do photosynthesis right away. I, I know it is plant, but it hasn't got the right organ to photosynthesize just yet. And it can remain dormant to survive harsh environment. I hope you know what is meant by dormancy now. What is it? What is dormancy? Are you dormant? Are you sure? Are you dormant or not? In, in a simpler words, dormant means when, when you have everything that you need to live actively, you can grow, you, you, you can move happily, healthily, but you're still not, not doing anything about it. That means you are dormant. Sometimes, there, there are things, living things, they, they don't do anything simply because they don't have the right things. For example, like 
um, like some seeds. Um, you know, like the mung bean. We take the easy example, the mung bean. <coughs> you know mung bean? No? Yes? Mung bean? What is it? Mung bean? The green bean. Mung bean. I think that's from Vietnam. That's how they call it. <coughs> is it dormant or not? The mung bean that you see on the supermarket shelf, is it dormant or not? It's in the packet. Is it dormant or not? Is it dormant or not? Is it dormant or not? I think he's dormant. Do you know mung bean? No. I think most of you do not know what mung bean is. Hi. Ni. Bubur kacang hijau. Tak pernah makan. Mung bean lah. Vigna radiata. You know, you know what I, I know. Most people do not know. Because when Umarani thought about this, nobody in the class know what Mamang Bing is right now. Um, okay. Is it normal or not? Now you know what Mamang Bing is? <laughs> On the supermarket shelf, it's in the bag. Is it dormant or not? No. Why? Why, why? why do you say that it's not dormant? Okay, so perangkat dalam plastik. It is trapped in the plastic. So it's not dormant. No. How do you understand the dormancy from what I just said? Bebas. Bebas. Bebas what? Rethink re again the thing I said about dormancy. It is called dormant when it has received all that it needs to grow help happily and healthily, but it doesn't do so. So, is the mung bean in the shelf in the supermarket shelf is dormant? Has, has it has it received everything? What hasn't it received? Water. Water. To sprout. So, is it dormant or not? <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Is it dormant or not? Actually, if you... This is the, one of the things you need to think a bit harder. Think about it. In our atmosphere, there's always water in the form of water vapor. However, that water is insufficient for the mung bean. Okay? It hasn't re reached to the point which is critical enough to trigger germination. Right. In our air now, in this room, is there water vapor or not? Right. Can you feel the water? But you say there is the water. Meaning what? Yeah, it is it is insufficient to become the liquid state until to the point you can feel it. But it is still there. The proof is take a mirror, blow against it. What do you see? You see water vapor? You don't see your, your, your face got blurred? <laughs> so you can see the effect of it, right? Okay. So that, that is the concept. You got stuff to facilitate growing, but maybe it is insufficient or not. It's not growing. It's just dormant. Think of sleeping, right? Okay, let's go on. 
and seeds also needs to be in a good right kind of shape to get dispersed okay seeds dispersal why needs to be dispersed why why seeds need to be dispersed why wouldn't it just grow next to mom or dad why why need seeds needs to be dispersed macam mana nak cakap bahasa inggris what even the Malay, I do cannot understand quite what what to avoid competition. How how come? Melawan. So they take out swords and start dueling. Melawan. <laughs> but you said just now competition. <coughs> Com compete in Malay. Is it berlawan? I use the right word. Bersaing. Bersaing. Seed dispersal ensure that the resulting seedlings is of minimum or acceptable amount of competition. Okay. Competition to get what? To get life resources. Water, nutrients, light. Spacing, what else? Love. Okay. And respond to environment cues and germinate at the right time and the right place. Okay. That's why you see some seeds is actually have eyes. You know, seeds got eyes. We call it receptors. Kind of like antenna. Think your astro dish. You see, when you ha you have a cell, let's say that this is your plant cell, right? So this is your cell wall. This is your plasma membrane. Yeah. Let's look enlarge this time on the surface of it. On the surface of all every cell, it is not empty membrane, just like the balloon. But it is studded with various things. So this can be like glycoprotein material. Glyco means carbohydrate. Protein means protein. Maybe it is, it's got a special kind of structure that looks like this. Maybe it is just like a dented like this. So what, what are all these? These are the receptors. They receive signals. Okay. So from now on, when you look at the plant cell or animal cells, please be aware that these cells are actively receiving signals from the environment or also from the neighboring cells by the action of receptors. Okay. Some receptors, they're not going to get activated until the right kind of signals get attached to it. Okay? Right. So seeds are alive. We all know that now. So why, why seeds are alive? So these are the conditions that enable the seeds to, to be defined alive. They respire even though super, super slow. Therefore, they consume oxygen and produce CO2 and water, but at a much, much slower pace. Okay. However, they have finite lifespan, meaning that your mung bean on your Tesco shelf is not going to last forever. At one point, the seeds will die off. Because when they respire, do you know what re respire? What is respire? What is respire? What is that? What is it? 
Have you heard that word before? No, yes? No, no. Okay. Do you know mitochondria? Mitochondria? Chondria? No as well? No as well. So I think what I You, you, you see, even though there is no prerequisite to take this class, but at least you need to have some basic biology information preserved in your head somehow. Okay. Um, mitochondria. Mitochondria. You have a cell. Okay. In your cell, there are many organelles. Okay. There are nucleus, there are chloroplasts, there are, there, there, there are many other things. One of them is called Mitochondria. Mitochondria is the power energy house for the cell. It is the structure in the cell that produces energy for the consumption of the cell. Okay, so the action of mitochondria utilizing um, glucose, break it down, producing energy, we call it respiration, cellular respiration. Okay, please remember that. You got it now? Are you sure? Please, please open your horizon, okay? If you, 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 you know, I do not know how much you do not know. Now, now I want to say that way. It seems like you do not know a lot. <clears throat> how old are you now? 26? 20? 22. <clears throat> you know, some, some students at 22, they are already in their final year, ready to work. Okay? Meaning that they have known a lot of things. But at 22, you are still struggling with your basics. Don't you think that something just not right somewhere? So this is coming back to the sixth sense I was talking about two weeks back. What is the sixth sense? No? What is it? The sixth sense. Anybody remember? What is it called? Nobody remember. Meaning that nobody got sixth sense. Proprioception. Ish, 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 ish. Pro perception. You, you aware where your limbs are, even though you are not looking at them directly. Close your eyes. If I say to you, press your ankle, you can press it. Press your knee, you can press it, even without looking at it. Right? So that is the state or the quality of being aware. So at this age, if you are still not in the state of aware that you do not know ample basic, this is going to be difficult with you along the way. I, I say this because there are many complaints from the industry about the graduates that are coming out from the university. So much complaint that, well, partly that is blamed because of the um, lockdown period. Many of you actually learn online. Anybody learn online before? A lot. Okay. Your competition, now think of yourself as a planter. You have a higher degree of competition compared to 10 years ago. So when you are in competition, should you be higher or lower than the rest of the population? Higher. higher. Do you think you are higher or otherwise against, against the, the, the rest of the population? How can you make yourself higher? The first thing is actually to know the basics. Yeah, so that whenever I'm mentioning, not just me, all the other subjects, 
when you are learning about all these things, since your basic is solid and firm, it is easy for you to grasp the concept and connect the dots. You will start to find, oh, there are so many interesting information out there and there's so many things I want to do now. Okay? Leading to the, the, to the one good thing is, I'll tell you one thing. You know, if people say that as you get older, you don't have energy, you feel tired and so on. Look at all the highly productive people, you know, when they are older, 40, 50, 60. Do they look like they are tired? They eat just like you. It's not like suddenly they got choice some from Mars. Why, why is that? So when you know a lot, very not easy to get, not to get tired. That is the key actually. People who know a lot will not get tired easily. Nobody can really explain why, but it is a fact. Why is it? I have a theory why. What do you think? People who know a lot will not get tired easily. They will not stay in one place, they will keep on doing stuff. They never bought. Are you bought now? Why? Because of the thing I just said in my babbling just now. Connect the dots. They know a lot of things. The moment something happens, even a very small thing, they saw, they, saw, they saw a bird flying, just passing by. It will trigger them to think. Oh, that's weird. Why suddenly we, we got a hornbill around here? This is not Sarawak. They will start to think. And that leads to another kind of thinking. You know, it's not thinking too much. Thinking too much, you are actually confined to a limited space. Like, you know, blaming yourself and that kind of thing. No, this kind of thinking, actually connecting the dot to find the root cause. You know, like a kind of like a reverse psychology. So thinking about, I, I saw a hornbill passing by in Serdang. Why is it? This, this is not Borneo. What, what could be the reason? Hmm, zoo got broken. Maybe a plan got ambushed. The birds that should be exported got released. What else? What else? What else? What else? Or maybe it's migrating, which is possible because we know the hornbill can 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 fly very far. So you you start to to to, to you will start to stand up and find the answer. You you're just curious. So imagine you are like that with every single thing. Do you have time to be tired and to be sloppy to support that major? No. So know a lot of things and connect the dots. You will not get tired easily. Yeah, to the point as you wonder when you're going to sleep. Right? Okay. So finite lifespan, lifespan, lifespan for the seed. So what, can, what kind of seed that can remain viable for long? What is viable? There's the concept here. Viability. And what's the other one? Vigor. What is viability? Viability means it is just simply a life. It is a life. Okay? So in Malay, I think it's called Bani Bernas. Vigor is actually the state of healthy and active. Look at you. 
How many of you in here? 30? Is everybody viable? Yes. Is everybody vigor? Yes. So you got the answer by yourself. Just because you are viable does not mean that you are vigor. Right. So since there are having these two qualities in agriculture is a very good thing because these are the seeds that will give rise to a healthy seedlings that will give rise to a maximum yield. We need that because, well, agriculture is a business. Okay. So between the tropical and temperate seeds, which which one do you think is more viable for longer? Why? It's already stated there. Tropical seeds, like it's, it's said there. I, I should have put it in there uh, earlier. Um, to have the tendency to remain viable for a shorter amount of time because the seeds are active in a warmer, moist climate. Okay, It's just metabolically active. Compared to the temperate seeds, remember again, what is temperate? Four seasons, okay? For four, four season countries, there are a moment of kind of dormant period, like the winter, it's very cold. So the seeds naturally is not metabolically active. So the seeds that originally come from the temperate countries, they have the tendency to remain viable for longer because they have this sleeping period that the tropical seeds do not have, okay? So look at this, it's a, a short way simple way to see whether the seeds are viable or not. What happened to the viable seeds? Yeah, sinking. What happened to the dead seeds? Why is that? Why? Why the viable seeds sinking while the dead seeds floating? Empty. Empty of what? Food. Is that all? So simply put, the viable seeds, usually they are cramped with nutritional goodness. They got the embryo, they got the food reserve, and this food reserve is actually full of water as well. It makes them more dense. So that's why they are sinking. The non-viable seeds, usually they do not have this. They might have the embryo, but maybe no or very little amount of food reserve. So they are less dense. That's why they are floating. Right? And this is only one test. You'll see in the lab practice, there are many ways to test for the seed viability. Okay, um, oh, this that looks a bit small. So, coming back to this, um, there is a concept when it comes to seed storage. <clears throat> so, some seeds you don't you don't want it to be germinating very fast. So, you want to keep it for quite some time. You want to store it first. Even in nature, okay? Not all seeds are meant to be immediately germinated for new seedlings, okay? So we call this as, um, there are two categories. We call it the orthodox seeds and also the recalcitrant seeds. So orthodox seeds, seeds that can undergo prolonged drying to the point the moisture content of it is very, very low. Usually 10% and below. And it is still viable. That's the key. The moisture has been removed, but it is still viable. Okay. Example for the orthodox seeds include um, 
rice, for example, grains usually. Grains and legumes. You know legumes? Example of legumes? Mung bean. That's good. Yeah. For recalcitrant seeds, seeds, um, well, you can dry the seeds, but the seed will, will pretty much become non viable. Okay? They, in order for them to be viable and germinating, it needs to stay wet. The moisture content needs to be higher. Okay? So, why is it called recalcitrant? Let's talk about language just for a bit. Orthodox. Have you heard that word before? Yes. Okay. What does it mean? Orthodox. What means orthodox? Dia ada? Dia ada prinsip. Dia ada prinsip tak pasti. Orthodox simply means traditional. Traditional, conventional, regular way of doing things. Orthodox. Recalcitrant means some something like you, the gill. Yeah. Recalcitrant simply means stubborn. Yeah. What what's the characteristic of stubborn? Usually unusual. People do one thing, you are not doing that thing. You're just being recalcitrant about it. You are being the gill about it, being stubborn about it. Okay? Right. So, good example is many fruit trees. Rambutan, mango, all these are recalcitrant seeds. Seeds that naturally when you eat, it comes with a super sweet, nice flesh. Think of mangosteen. Have you ate, have you eaten mangosteen before? Yes. Mm. There, there is there is a good riddle that can come from mangosteen. Maybe you want to ask your friends from from other group later today. What fruit can make you young forever when you eat it? What? I, I already said the answer and then I give the, the question. Still you cannot cannot figure it out. Lemah. Depan mata dah aku cakap. Again, the state of being aware. I think Japanese got this 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 concept as well. It's called what's the word? Unagi. Not the eel. Unagi sushi. Unagi. You you just being aware. Okay. So something you can ask your friend later. Right. Okay. Right. Another concept is this thing. The seed lifespan. Just now is the seed moisture con um, moisture level ability, whether it can be viable in a low moisture or otherwise. That is orthodox versus recalcitrant. In this, and there's another one. It's called seed storage. It's, it can be the microbiotic, mesobiotic, and macrobiotic. So microbiotic lifespan that is exceeding three years. And then you have mesobiotic between 3 to 15 years and then you have macrobiotic 15 years to 1000 of years okay so seed storage classification of seed storage recalcitrant orthodox and seed lifespan microbiotic mesobiotic and macrobiotic right okay so i just put it here just to give you some perspective. Look at this. Even though there is a clear definition of orthodox and recalcitrancy, some seeds are actually intermediate. There's always intermediate. Okay? So, they kind of, you can think of evolution. They are trying to evolve to become the other side, but they are still in the process. So, they become the intermediate. 
right? And this is the general structure of a seed. You have a seed, cross-section it, and it looks like this. So these are the important parts that you need to know. Take your pencil, take your paper, draw it. Please remember, like really, I'm surprised even some PhD student cannot draw fundamental structure like this. Okay, so it needs to have the embryo. In the in the case of this seeds, this this looks like a bean seeds, the mumbi. Okay, it's got the embryo. From embryo, you will get the root, stem, and leaves later once the seeds have germinated, and then you got the food reserve. So food reserve in the seeds, depending on the species of the plant it can come in two forms either endosperm or specialized structure called cotyledon right and finally the seed coat this is like the jacket of the seed so the seed coat is not contributing to the seedling germination but it's actually to protect the other structure because remember the seeds need to travel during the dispersing journey and also from the weathering. You know weathering? Have you taken your soil science? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So what is weathering? Process? Lulu Hawa. What are weathering agents? Can somebody name? Give me one weathering agent. Agent Lulu Howell, you should learn this in your geography time. Air, water, what else? Suhu, angin, what else? Sun, true, what else? Hujan is air. What else? What are other weathering agents that you can think of? Time. Time. Abulila time. Not physically. What else? Sejuk, so, that's temperature. Ha uh, hot and cold. What? Movement. Earthquake. Look at the rock cracking. That's just weathering. Right? Okay. So pretty much, if you have learned your soil science, when you learn about the topic of weathering, process the Luhawa, that's pretty much the function of seed coat. We try to protect the seeds from all those agents. Come the dicot and monocot. I hope you still remember this from your botany, okay? What is dicot? What is monocot? What is cotyledon? That's interesting. What is cotyledon? Cotyledon is seed. Cotyledon kat dekat mana? Where is cotyledon? Where is cotyledon? Have you heard the word cotyledon before? Yes, okay. What is it and where is it? Cotyledon shoot and root. But it's in the seed, baby leaves. So cotyledon, you can regard it as a kind of like the baby leaves. Remember I said just now, food reserve in seeds can be two, endosperm and a specialized structure. This is the specialized structure. Some seeds do not have endosperm. You can't see the endosperm. However, it becomes a specialized structure such as cotyledon. So the seed still got the food reserve, but in different form. Okay. I ask this because I want to see if you have read it ahead of time or not. Okay. So angiosperm, flowering plants, you can divide it into dicots and monocots. There are many species, but dicots actually the ones that dominate most of the plant uh, kingdom 
like beans, roses, cacti, melon, citrus, and so on. And then you've got your monocots like grasses, lilies, and orchids. Okay. So depending on the leaf, these baby leaves here, that is present in the seed, whether one or two, will determine whether it's called monocot or dicot. Mono means one, di means two. Okay. In dicot, it is called cotyledon. It's got two cotyledons. So this cotyledon is the one that emerges as the seed germinating. So that is not true leaf. Please bear in mind. The seeds that just germinated, you see the leaves, right? That is not true leaf. It is not true leaf. It is the baby leaves. The, the one that originate from the seeds. So the true leaf is after this. Usually the third leaf. Okay. For the monocotyledon, the, the seeds, this, is, this should be um, uh, clearer. You can see that for the monocot and dicot, it has got special characteristic, not just on the seed anatomy, but also at the plant level. Dicot, usually what, what is the characteristic of the root? Is it fibrous or tap root? Tap root. Monocot usually is fibrous root. What about the venation pattern? Which, which one is parallel, monocot or dicot? Monocot. Which one is reticulated? Dicot. Dicot, okay. And then you have other characteristics such as the floral um, appearance and so on. Okay. So these are the structure of it. And this is the way that it germinates. You can see that... Um, For these seeds, you can see the, the cotyledon actually coming up from the soil for this bean, for the dicot. But for the monocot, the seeds, the casing of the seed stay in the ground. Okay, So this gives rise to two terminologies of hypogeal and epigeal. Hypo means under. Geo means um, geo, ground. Epi means edge or above. Something like that. Okay. So the, it, it's referring to this cotyledon um, set. Okay, again. You, you keep seeing this structure keep cropping up, meaning that it will be in your exam. So please know and memorize the structure and how to draw it. Can you see this little structure? That micropile. You see? The whole seat, you know, it has got the jacket, the seat coating. Or testa. However, there is a small opening to allow all this water and nutrient to get in. Okay, kind of like you know, baby's navel. You know, you know, navel. What's that? Belly button. What's the difference between navel and belly button? Is there any difference? So, micropile is equivalent to that. Okay, to the navel or belly button of a baby. What is attached to the belly button when the baby is growing? Mm, what is it called in English? What is it called? Um, umbilical cord.
This is tali pusat. The thing that is attached like a piece of meat, what do you call it? This thing. This is placenta. So why is it in Malay? Uri <laughs> lah. Any other word? Sub, who knows? It start with T. What? Term, boo, me. The same terminologies is used in the botany as well. You remember you learned about the placentation per urian? Yeah. So, kind of like similar. Okay. Right. I think I already mentioned this. The endospermous and non-endospermous seeds. Okay. So, um, this is the non-endospermous seed. You don't find the endosperm that get labeled, but the endosperm actually, you know, it has become a specialized structure called cotyledon. Okay. And this is for the dicot plant, for example, the mangbe. For the grass species, like what seed is this? Corn. No cotyledon, but it's got the endosperm, the food reserve. Endosperm is the very brass that you eat. You know, the white rice that you eat. Are you eating the embryo or endosperm? Where is the embryo? Is it still there? Where, where has it gone? Where, where has it gone? The, the, the embryo of the rice, if you say that it's not intact anymore. Or is it still there? Who, who says the rice that you eat still have embryo intact? Raise your hand. Who say that no embryo on the rice? Can I see some hand? Who's on the fence? So, I wonder. Yeah, I ask the question again. Who said embryo is still intact on the rice? Raise your hand. Four. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven. Okay. Who says that the embryo is no longer there? Three. Aku cakap jadi respons yang kelihatan aku kan? Embryo intact or not? <laughs> Bang, bangun. Embryo on the rice, is it still intact or not? No. Why? Where has it gone? Dia pergi mana? Do you, do you understand the lesson? Okay. The rice, do you eat rice? Okay. You eat rice. I don't eat rice. So, it, it's forgiven if I do not know this. Even though, by the way, I'm 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 plant scientist. Um, that that's right. Embryo in rice is it still intact or not? If it's not, where is it? What happens to it? Masa proses sudah tak ada. Proses apa? Mm -hmm. Dah tak ada. Tiba-tiba tak ada. How? 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 So what is the answer? You know, if you if you if you take rice rice, I I I don't teach rice rice science rice production anymore. <clears throat> um, the answer is both. Depending on what kind of rice are you eating? Because this, the, the rice that you eat 
can come from different line of rice production. Rice that you eat uh, in the form of white rice that has been dehusked and polished. The husk means to, to remove the, the, the husk, the brown jacket of the rice. And then you, you get brown rice. So you got the rice, you remove the husk, you get brown rice. This brown rice, you polish it, you get white rice. So the moment you polish it, polishing usually remove about 15 to 20% from the outer side of it. And the embryo is here on the side when you polish it you will remove the embryo so when you eat white rice you don't have embryo however if you eat brown rice there's a good chance the embryo is still there because it only removed the outer jacket the husk what was husk in malay sekam sekam all right okay Anybody don't eat rice? Anybody? You know, I like to ask this question. Macam tak ada je. Why ah? Clap me, alien. Fun, fun fact, I really don't eat rice. At one point, when I was a student, I asked Mufti, what fitra should I pay? Should I pay an amount of rice or an amount of broccoli? I actually asked that. <laughs> you know, fitra, the zakat fitra? Yes. You pay according to the rice, right? Yes. Yeah, since I don't eat rice, what well, I should pay according to what? Uh, that, that much of a concern that time. So should I pay you know, secukat broccoli, rice. At, at least the, the, the mufti didn't, didn't laugh at me. It was in Malaysia, it was, it, was, it, was, it was back in England. Long, long time ago. How was it? Mm. 14 years ago. Until no, no, it's from the beginning. I do eat rice from the beginning. I do eat rice just a few times a year. So, what what was my zakat should be base, be basing on? Is it is it broccoli or rice? Broccoli. Who say broccoli? Who say broccoli? Who say I should pay my zakat according to broccoli? Why rice? I don't eat rice. That's not my staple. Rice and broccoli, which one is more expensive? Broccoli. So if I pay rice, don't you think aku akan masuk hawiyah? Yelah, aku bayar zakat tak cukup. Tak, tak. Rice and broccoli, which one is cheaper? Rice. So, if I, if, if I eat broccoli throughout my life, so, but I pay zakat in the price of Right, which a difference about 60%. Don't you think um, somebody is going to see the hell very soon? <laughs> <laughs> so, so I pay according to what price? Broccoli. Broccoli. <laughs> who said who say I paid pay the, the price of broccoli? Okay, one, two, three. Got broccoli. So the rice are favorite rice. The again the answer is both. <laughs> According to where I, I live at the moment. That time um it, it, the the the, init, the initial um ruling is to pay for the local staple food. You eat rice. If you go to Persian, you go to other Middle East country, they eat wheat. Of course, is that rice? No. 
so they, they don't pay according to, to your pricing. Are they going to see that very soon? <laughs> uh -huh. So pay according to the staple food, okay, or of, of the place. However, over the time, they refine the ruling. So that's why you see that, start, I think starting last year, they have started discriminating the rice that you eat. The zakat fitrah. That's a three category. <laughs> At least in Selangor, they got three rice uh, pricing. Yeah, according to the grade that you use. Is it a grade, uh, regular grade, the meat grade, or the, the, the refined grade? Because some, some people, they, they like to eat premium rice, you know, the fragrant, expensive basmati kind of rice. So that's more expensive. So they pay that. That, uh, I think, I think uh, they, need, they needed to pay. Regular people pay about five ringgit, right? So that, that group of people pay 14, I think? 14, more than twice. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so according to the local local staple food, see at least you know. So can it be broccoli? Yes, if the whole city eat broccoli, which is the bunny kingdom. All right, endospermous or non endospermous? Look at this, endospermous or non endospermous seeds. This could be your exam question. Jawapan dia dah ada kat situ dah. Is it non or endospermous? Non endospermous. Why? Ha, lah dah ada cotyledon. Terang-terang dah ada cotyledon. Memang tak boleh lah ada endosperm. Endospermous or non endospermous? Why? Ha, ni tak nampak lagi sajalah kan? Ha, nampak yang sperm tu. Yeah. Just a few differences between the monocot and dicot leaf. In dicot, you call it cotyledon, correct? In grass or monocot, the same structure has a new name now. It's called um, scutellum. Scutellum. Uh, from the word scutella, it is a Latin word. It means shield. Shield, small shield. You know shield? Yeah. yeah. Uh, depending on which one you buy. Shield. Yeah. And um, what else? Yeah. There's this uh, structure as, as well. The coleoptile and the coleoriza. It is the protecting cap, like your pen. You got a cap, right? So it's a protecting cap to protect either plumule or radical. Plumule will give rise to leaf. Radical will give rise to root. So the protective sheath, um, coleoptile, coleoptile. Um, I think this is Greek. Greek, Greek word. Did you, did you learn Latin and Greek during your botany? Have you taken your botany? Did you learn it? Or you didn't take it with me, of course, because you're from this faculty. So, so this tile, this is tilon. This is, this means um, plant or tip. Coleop, this means shift. Shift. Shift means saro. You know, like a sword, you got a shift. Yeah. So you got coleoptile. Remember, coleoptile is for the plumule. Coleorizia, riza means root. It's a Greek word as well. Riza means root. Coleorizia is the protecting cap for the root. Again, uh, to it keeps cropping up, confirm as an exam. Right, so look at this um, endospermic seed. The plant embryo increases in size, only absorb 
some of the endosperm like the corn okay so um this is not good is this the correct um oh yeah 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 this is correct we got the endosperm thing i actually missed one thing to tell you this thing this allura layer so when you have your endosperm structure so I say that this is your endosperm there is there is a, a lining surrounding your endosperm so this is called this lining is actually made out of um, cells so this is called alluron layer so alluron layer contains cells that gives off um, hydrolytic enzymes when the seed is germinating, it needs to break down the complex sugar into simple sugar so that the embryo can eat. So a layer, layer gives off this enzyme so that the food reserve can be of simpler form so that the embryo baby can eat. So this is the alluron layer. And coming back to the rice story, the Polish rice and brown rice, the brown rice when you polish it, it becomes white rice. White. White, right? What is the thing that it polished? What, what, what is it called? Bran layer. So this is what the, the byproduct called the duck. This bran layer is actually a luron layer. Full of vitamins, enzymes, oil. Yeah. So your your chicken feed is more nutritious than yours. <laughs> because you are only eating the starch, the endosperm. All the vitamins, the oil, the enzyme from the alluron layer in the form of bran has been given to the KFC. Why? Honestly, because it doesn't taste good. That's that's the only reason why. Okay, so all right. So this is just to 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 revise what has been um uh, shown before. Okay, so cross section from the side and also from the other side of it. So please be able to draw something like this and then label it accordingly. When I ask in the question, draw and label cotyledon, you are able to do it. Draw and label scutellum, you are able to do it. Okay, please do that. All right. Okay. So what what time now? Yeah. So let's finish this in ten minutes. Um, very quickly about the seed dormancy. So the seed dormancy. Ah, huh, what is it? It's a phenomenon. It would not germinate if given optimal condition. Didn't I define this earlier? Yeah, so got all the water, oxygen, optimal temperature, but it has it's still not germinating. Sometimes it has received but insufficient. Okay, lack of oxygen, dryness. Look at the word dryness. Dryness doesn't mean that zero water. It's just insufficient water. Right? Present of substance that inhibit germination. This usually hormone. Um, ABA. Do you know, Lan, got hormones? Yes. Do you have hormones? Yes. Are you hormonal? Yes. Mm, memang lah. <laughs> Aku tanya dia hormonal ke tak? Dia cakap iya. So, <laughs> are you hormonal? Yes, you got. <laughs> do, do, do you understand when people ask you whether you are hormonal or not? Is, is that a good thing or what? Are you hormonal? No. Did you start hormonal? Memang lah kan dia. Are you hormonal? Dia bukan hormonal, dia ignore aku terus. 
Anybody hormonal? Okay. So, what does it mean when when, when somebody call you you are being hormonal? You're getting excited. That's different kind of hormone. You are emotionally unstable. Yeah, emotionally unstable, and you are just easily ticked off. You are on the edge. Okay. Kan? When the time comes, ni kalau prinsip masuk tempat dia pun dia ah, mana lah tu? Mana? Ah, guys, don't get too happy too soon. You can get hormonal as well. Right? Okay. It has the word hormone. It controls you. There's nothing much you can do about it. Okay, growth under extreme conditions. So why 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 dormancy happens? Okay, so it's a it's only a, a short period when the metabolic activities become minimum. Metabolically, it's still happening, but at minimum amount, right? And this is the important bit of it. Growth stop. If it's growing, what will happen to your mung bean at Tesco? It will not become a bag of mung bean. It will become a bag of what? Tauge. Because it's growing. Right? So, when it's dormant, it is resting, and it can occur at any stage of life. When you are sleeping, that is dormant as well. A form of dormancy. Right? So, what's the difference between dormancy and hibernation? Yeah. You know what? Let's let's make this a quiz question. So for you to find out what's the difference between hibernate and dormant being, you know, hibernation and dormancy. What's the difference? Do you hibernate? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. When do you hibernate? Your your friend said yes. Do you hibernate? Do you hibernate? Hibernate tu macam mana? Hmm. Ah, homework. Cari maksud hibernate and dormancy. What's the difference between the two? Is there any difference? Hibernate what? Hibernate berehat? It's a way, maybe it's a way of like to stay in a if it's dormant, call it dormant. If it's hibernating, call it hibernating. It's either two. Maybe your window computer can answer the question. Hi hibernate versus sleep versus sign up versus restart versus shut down or ver versus hang. What, what, what was it? Maybe, maybe your computer can have it. Okay. And dormancy is also a way of protecting organism against unfavorable condition, okay? Because when it is not good to germinate, like the seeds in the temperate countries in winter, that's not the right time to germinate, to so stay dormant. And this is controlled by hormones, okay? Yeah. So, why, why, why dormancy is needed? Uh, what 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 happens during uh, dormancy? Physiological events, metabolism comes down, number of organelles falls. What else? Lacks of reduced water content, the vacuoles become shrinking. What else? Food reserve become hardened. You know the endosperm when the endosperm the cotyledon. In the dormancy period, they are actually hard. They're not soft. That's why the, the seeds can become dormant. Right. And let me see. Okay. Um, I think we can stop until here, breaking seed dormancy. So, yeah. So, let's just stop here at how to break dormancy. Okay. So, we... 
we do the lecture here until the concept of dormancy. So next week, we'll continue about breaking dormancy and germination of the seeds. Right. Okay, I think that's all. <coughs> what time now? Nine to five. Right. <coughs> Any question? Any question? Anybody want to drop, but it's too late? <laughs> all right. Okay. All good? Good. All right. Okay. So I'll see you on Wednesday. All right. I think my chunk of lab code. You know, I'm not. I'm not kind of like keen to lab code. I only do lab code when I do like ex um, dangerous experiments. <laughs> but but just 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 worry in case somebody visiting. I don't wear it. Don't fall. It's okay. Nobody can do so much to me. <laughs> all right. Okay, that's all. So, see you.